Curbs are required as a means for diverting water around large penetrations. Chimneys, ventilator openings, skylights, or roof hatches typically require curbs. In most cases, the curb is designed as an integral part of the panel system with the ability to float with the panels as they expand and contract with the change of temperatures. To complete the typical curb, you will need curb base, apron flashing, and offset cleat, ice and water shield, one part polyurethane sealant caulk, 3 16 inch sealed rivets, 1 8 inch by 1 inch butyl tape, keyhole closures, metal and foam closure system. The base flashing designed larger than the penetration to allow for the maximum anticipated thermal movement, usually one inch on each side. The side pan of the curb must be made long enough to provide a minimum of four inch clearance. The sides must extend a minimum of eight inches beyond the front face and a minimum of 24 inches beyond the rear face. Leave a minimum of eight inches between the curb and the upslope panels. Install an approved ice and water shield from the eave to the penetration. Continue the ice and water shield six foot around the sides and above. Install zip rib until the panel is within five to seventeen inches when using the twelve inch profile or five to twenty one inches when using the sixteen inch profile. Install the downslope panels until the panel is a minimum of five inches beyond the penetration. To assemble the base flashing, start with the side pans. The side pans are factory supplied long. Field cut and bend up a one and a half inch leg. At the front of the side pan, field cut and bend a three quarter inch hem. Do the same with the other side pan. One inch sealant tape is applied for the connection of the back piece. The welded back piece is also field cut to size with a one and a half inch leg field bent on each side. Assemble all three pieces with sealed rivets through the sealant tape at three inches on center. Decide where the upslope panels will end and install the offset cleat with sealant tape between. Rivet through the sealant tape at three inches on center. Install the front cleat on the downslope panels with sealant tape between. Notch out the nailing leg for the pencil ribs. Rivet through the sealant tape at three inches on center. Do this on both sides of the penetration. Set the assembled curb in place and hook on to the front cleats. Field cut and upslope panel to reach to the front of the curb. Cope out the pan, leaving an extended female rib. Save the male rib for the other side. Turn the panel over to fill the first two inches of the pencil ribs with sealant caulk. Hand crimp the top six inches of the downslope panel to receive the upslope panel. Set the upslope panel. Rivet the extended rib to the bent up leg of the base flashing with sealant caulk between at four inches on center. Utilize a scrap piece of metal to protect the back pan while drilling through the panel and cleat. Rivet together with tape sealant between at three inches on center. On the other side, the male rib overlaps the downslope panel. Rivet to the bent up leg of the curb base with sealant caulk between at four inches on center. Install keyhole closures at panel seams of the upslope panels. Install the last upslope panel so the male rib laps over the attached rib below. The installation of full panels can continue. Pan end panels on curbs with full panels between. Install the foam and metal closure system. See the ridge installation video for more information. The vertical tabs of the apron flashing are tucked inside the curb base. The sloped tabs are installed outside. This method compresses the caulk between for a more snug fit. Rivet at four inches on center. When necessary, install snow guards to protect the curb from sliding snow and ice. See the snow guard installation video for more information.